Hi guys, it's Paul. Welcome to another video. So lately I've been wondering about what to do for the next tutorial video. Now in the past I've got a lot of messages about doing lettering and things of that nature. So I guess here it is. This is my step-by-step -step guide to lettering. Now before we start, I do want to point out that this tutorial will not apply to all forms of lettering, but you might be able to apply the same kind of things to different styles and different forms. Hopefully it will help with some of the problems that you guys have been having. Now one of the biggest problems that people tend to have with lettering is consistency, which means some of the letters won't have a consistent lean when doing an italic style, or that some of the letters are bigger than others. But the one problem with lettering is that this kind of inconsistency will stand out, and it can also make a good piece look bad. And for the majority of lettering, consistency is the key. Today I am going to show you how to fix all these problems that you've been having. Now over the years I've come up with my own ways of teaching lettering, and it seems to be helping a lot of people take their lettering game to the next level. And in this video I'll be demonstrating those techniques so that you can try them for yourself. So let's get started. So we always want to start off with some guidelines to keep us within the area we have. Sometimes lettering has to fit and flow into gaps left by other tattoos. So we want to make sure that we don't start going past where that space allows us. But for the purpose of this tutorial, let's just say there's no restrictions on space and we just want a nice piece to fill the area. Our first line is for our capital letters and our taller letters. So we go with just a nice basic line and we want to go for the bottom like this. Now make sure these are parallel and finally we have our third line. Now this gives us a guide for the top of the lowercase letters um, and just like the second line this will be used to keep our letters more consistent in size and things like that. So I'm going to do that kind of thing. Okay, now we have our guidelines down we can move on to the work. So, uh, let's just go with the word beautiful okay now I'm only using this word as an example because it has a lot of different types of letters in it right now let's just take that down a bit in the opacity so it's not as dark now this is where my binary method comes in. Uh, I came up with the ones and zeros method years ago. I've used it to teach a lot of people ever since. So the idea behind the ones and zeros method is that every letter has a corresponding one or a zero. So for example, all around the letters like uh, A, you know, B, C, D, E, these will all use zero okay and letters like F L uh, J things like that will all use one okay and this this rule applies to all letters now let me show you an example of how we use this now going back to the word beautiful we want to start with our binary method. So zero. Okay. Now this is an easy way to make sure that all of your letters have the same angle on them. Okay, so they all lean the same amount. So just remember to make sure that your zeros and ones all look around about the same. Now comes the interesting part where we make sense of all of this. 
So let's take that down as well. Okay. And we create another layer. Okay, so this is again we start making a bit more of a rough sketch. This can be as rough as you want it to. None of that really matters right now. Just remembering, just remembering how every letter flows and is made up. yet we will always kind of sort this out later on now you see where I'm going with this so we've gone from the ones and zeros to this now we have our rough sketch we can go back and now clean it up a little bit so again same thing as we've always done new layer okay now remember this type of lettering has an upstroke and a downstroke so with this it will be a bit more like a fountain pen but on the downstroke it's thick and the upstroke thin now the downstroke is always thicker because when doing this with a pen or a quill or a fountain pen the tip of the pen would part uh, and spread the ink over a wider area giving us the thick thin thick thin pattern so it look a bit more like this okay so notice the thinner on this side thicker on this side because it's more of a downstroke okay okay so at this point what we want to do is we want to refine it a little bit okay so i want to Add some a bit more to it than a first. Maybe.
Okay, so I'm thinking about making this a bit more of a, a thicker kind of lettering. So at the moment I'm still in the rough sketch stage where I'm just kind of trying to get a flow for the, the letters and the feel for what I want to do with it. Okay, so everything's still quite rough. keep on going with this up until we're a bit closer to what we have in mind for the finished product. Alright, now we've got our lettering down, uh, we can kind of go back and have a look to see if any of these letters could do with adding a little bit of flair to them or style. Um, so let's back I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of a flick to these letters to the top of every letter and just make them a bit more interesting on top yeah I think that works this, I think what I want to do with this is a, just kind of mimic the, you know, the curve of the other side. So, you know, I think I'll bring it real, you know, something like that. I think with the, the F coming nice and low like this, I can bring it like this and maybe you know, make like a bit of an underline, like an underline for the, you know, the whole piece. So maybe bring it a bit more like this. And we can start to you know, do some kind of flourishes from it. So I think I might sometimes, you know, L's kind of like this kind of thing. 
what I'll do is I'll bring that line from the L and bring it straight across just like that. No. to bring that a bit lower maybe this can you know, branch off in different ways too okay I think something like that that, that works nicely so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna again bring the opacity down Notice that I'm always looking back over this way so that I can see that I am doing this section and this section the same thickness and the same gap between the lines. finishing touches like uh, pinstriping and any other fine details that we want to add in. I've got a couple of ideas on what I'm going to do with the actual lettering but let's stick to the pinstriping for now. Okay so this I think with this I'm going to bring this back on itself now and this so everything kind of still flows this way. And with this, just play about with different ways, different shapes. Always remembering the direction that you're going in. Now, I'm also using this time clean up any lines that I'm noticing as I go. Any little sections I think could be a bit cleaner. Okay. Okay, as you can see we're nearly done. I'm just putting some of the final touches to this now. Just adding some little bit more detail wherever I feel necessary. Okay, 
So now we have this kind of thing. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of go in and just change some tiny little details. just to kind of finish this whole piece off, make it all one piece. Skip to the end of this just so you can see what it's like when it's all done. So I will see you in a second. Alright, so now that that's done, usually this is the part where I go back over everything and just make sure that there's no uh, kinks or bumps or lumps or anything like that within the piece um, the last thing we want is for something not to flow um, we don't really want anything like this where you've got a bit of a kink in the line or the or anything like that um, so yeah but as for, as for the, the purpose of a tutorial I won't, I won't bother doing that kind of thing um, I just wanted to get across you know, that you can use my method. My method does work to basically do this. So there you go. That is my tutorial and my method of making letters easier. All right guys, so that's pretty much it. It's extremely easy to do when you use the ones and zeros method. I would highly recommend giving it a go if you're having problems with lettering and things of that nature. So if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Please comment down below if you have anything else you want to ask. And uh, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys.